What's up, heathens? How ya doing? Today we're going to be talking about D Marble's laser test across the 10 mile expansion of the Puget Sound. Now we're going to be discussing why this isn't actually a science experiment, the things that he gets wrong when doing this quote unquote experiment, and the actual reasons for why you can see the laser all the way across the Puget Sound. So if you're interested in this information, then please stay tuned. Now, in case you guys haven't seen, D Marble did run a quote unquote experiment using the Puget Sound up near Seattle, Washington. Of course, I disagree with his particular findings on this because he fails on many different points. For one thing, though, I want to address his setup and how he presented his video. For one thing, he has his faux science game on fleek. Mark was at Owen Beach at Point Defiance Park and you'll see his laser fade in on the horizon. All right, so the distance between these two points is 10.3 miles. Mark's gonna say in a little bit that he's about seven feet above sea level. That gives us a target hidden height of 33.2 feet. Ah, shoot, we're out of focus. Still see it though. I mean, he's got a laser, he's got cameras, he's got half-ass measurements, and he has the vocabulary. At this point, I'm anticipating that someone suffering from cognitive dissonance is going to say, no, he was more than seven feet above sea level. Okay, so let's say eight and a half. Now, where's the other 30 feet of curvature? Everything that would make you think, oh, this is a legit science experiment, but it really isn't. For one thing, in a real science experiment, you would want to isolate the variable that you're testing for so that any effects that you might see could only be because of that thing that you're testing for. But D Marble doesn't do this at all. In fact, I'll show how he actually has a lot of different variables that he didn't account for that end up poisoning his final result. And for one thing to get into these problems is that he only performs one test, or at least he only showed us one test. Now, there are very specific things that you have to account for with this test because he doesn't account for the temperature, he doesn't account for barometric pressure, uh, he doesn't account for a lot of different things. And one of the ways that he could have accounted for those is by doing several experiments throughout the day and seeing if he could actually see the laser from that far away. My guess is, is that he did the laser near nighttime so that he could actually visually see the laser. But I would suspect that you would need to run this particular experiment during the day as well. Preferably, he would need to do one in the morning, midday, straight up noon, one in the afternoon, and then probably one at night, like minimum. I would think that that amount of data would give you enough to actually extrapolate whether or not the Earth was flat as far as this laser test goes, or at least not prove it, but it would be able to point you in the direction of like a flat or spherical Earth. Like I alluded to a second ago, he doesn't take a full range of readings. Uh, he's left out a whole lot of things that are accounted for by refraction. Can we see the laser just fine from 10 miles away over all this flat water? Don't we see? Isn't that what we, we're seeing right now, people? Now, in case you guys don't know, refraction is what happens when light travels across the surface of the water and the light is actually refracted by the atmosphere and it ends up going over the curve. It, refraction in this particular context, mind you. And the factors that you would have to account for are barometric pressure and the temperature. Now, I have several links down below if you would like to actually go and check out like atmospheric refraction and how all of this is actually mathematically like calculated. Lucky for us though, he took a lot of video for this one experiment that he ran and we can see atmospheric refraction happening in the video. You see this right here? That particular laser light should be well above the surface of the water, but what do we see it doing? We see it below the curvature. Like, it's actually a little below it. And there are several reasons for this. One is re atmospheric refraction. But I'm going to let a friend of mine, Greater Sapien, come in and explain why there's another aspect of this that D Marble forgets about. Now, you've anticipated the argument about refraction, even though you know it affects light and you didn't use it in your calculation. 
Do I think that refraction accounts for what you saw in your results? No. I'm going to talk about something you didn't account for and you probably never thought of. The divergence of the laser beam. That is, the amount the beam spreads out over distance. The reason I think of it right off the bat is because we never see the little dot of the laser landing on an object on your side of the water. The fact that you can see the light and the two cameras can see the light, even though you were in three different spots, tells me the laser has spread out by the time it gets to you. How much did it spread out? What is the beam divergence of that laser? Now, looking at your video, that laser looks like it just came out of the box. No special attachments, so I'd say it's probably the standard 5 milliradians. I'm not going to um, bother going into the math, uh, but that means over 10 miles it will have expanded some 260 feet. You can look up the math. Now, the real important factor is how far will the beam have spread by the time it got to the horizon, which from a four foot height, uh, excuse me, a seven foot height is about three and a quarter miles out with no refraction on a perfect sphere. Well, by that distance, it will have spread out to some 85 feet. That means it has erased the distance to the horizon and is now a 85 foot wide half circle broadcasting from less than seven miles away. Do you think we could see that? Especially with refraction and reflections and scattering thrown in? Yeah, you need to do better, Daryl. You know, Greater Sapien, uh, I actually thought of this when I first saw his video too, but I was, uh, I was trying to think of other ways that it could be explained as well. And his shitty shot at science is, is more than an explanation, I think. But again, this particular aspect of what we're seeing here is very important. And it is, again, something that he doesn't account for. And then he follows up his video with this little piece. Checkmate. Checkmate. <laughs> Checkmate. That's game. That's game. That's game. Is it not? No, D Marble, it is not done. You haven't destroyed anything. You haven't defeated the globe model or anything like that because both I and Greater Sapien here have been able to tell you exactly why you're still able to see the laser over the 10 miles of water, but we're also telling you how you suck at science. This is basic shit that you learn in school, but of course we all know how you feel about school. I know. We've all been taught that we live on a globe since we were children. This is just basic scientific understanding. And mind you, this understanding was around way before any of our modern institutions came around. So this isn't anything like indoctrination and it doesn't have a massive agenda behind it or anything other than just basically educating humans. <laughs> but look at that globe and recognize that the blue areas on that globe represent bodies of water, namely oceans. Water doesn't mysteriously start to curve downward after 10 miles. I like here how he says that the water mysteriously curves and shit. When it doesn't mysteriously curve, we know why it curves. Because the Earth is a sphere. It's not flat. I would like to thank Greater Sapien for joining us today uh, to debunk D Marble here. He's got uh, this video that I pulled an excerpt from is on his channel, so please go there check out the full video. Uh, Greater Sapien, I really appreciate you letting me let, letting me use it in my video here. And what did you heathens think? Do you think that he's got a point here? Am I wrong about how to do science? Can you think of a better way in order to do these scientific experiments or any kind of you know advice? Advice you can give D Marble here other than to go back to third grade fucking science. Let me know in the comments below and while you're down there make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye heathens.